You were sitting on the ground between a bright holly bush and rhododendrons warm with sun. I pick a blade of grass, try to whistle through it, settle for humming through it instead. You don't look at me. I pick another blade of grass for gnawing and stare at our empty bird feeder. The wind raises the colors of this tidy little island in our backyard. The flash of red roses, the pink shine of bright eyes, and my favorite, daisies blazing yellow. I hear the soft purr of wings. Two butterfly visitors and a hummingbird dally around near where you sit. Usually the door into your eyes is closed, but now it's open. This is only the second or third time I can remember the door to your eyes ever being open. It's almost as if you're in prayer or meditation. You don't seem to mind and maybe even enjoy getting your hands dirty. Occasionally you lean down to sniff a blossom, which scents your cheeks. The lather of light on your hair makes me think of a line from the Talmud, which says every blade of grass, every flower, has its own angel hovering over it, whispering, grow, grow. You, my darling autistic daughter, of my angel. With each breath, you seem to pass the world of our garden through your nose and mouth, into your lungs and body, stirring it, infusing it, exhaling something of yourself back to the earth, making all the living things around you glow. From moment to moment, you paint a different perception with your face and the focus of your eyes, a way of looking at the world I've never noticed before that makes me want to re-examine how I look at it. A squirrel appears in my peripheral vision. Short buzzer of a bird echoes somewhere over my head. I sit down, not too close to you, though close enough that I could reach out and touch you. My senses wake slowly like a sleeping child. Cut grass and honeysuckle calm me. New buds quivering like newborns remind me that I've gradually exiled myself from beautiful things. And then a flirtatious flower, the abracadabra in one whiff, lifts me back to childhood, where notes of fragrances play in harmony with my sense of smell, the sweet top note of a rampaging rose, the green grassy middle notes, the deep bass notes of moist soil, a symphony undiluted by words or meaning, transporting me on a breeze of beatific memory through all the years I have lived. The peace of the instant washes over me, a cresting wave, a primal power to move me through a world inaccessible for 30 years, where smells cancel time and distance. Smells of my youth leak from the earth, odors detonate memories like burst bubbles of sugary gum. They leave my mind thick with blossom, thick with moments sealed in light and peace, a tender remembrance of my mother feeding me homemade soup for a cold, the mesmerizing smell of my grandfather's garage after a summer rain. From nowhere, I'm suddenly conscious of the sex life of flowers, their youthful blooms of vigor and vitality, seducing bees with their nectar. My nostrils, crammed with scents, evoke summer's past and spring fields far away. They lure out my harem of secret memories and the courage to write to you about them. The forgotten smell of a lover's pillow, the sweet violet of her breath, a confectionery of young sweat strolling among the decades in nameless perfumes, impressions without words, a mute experience stirred by a pleasant wind. From another flower comes a jailbreak of odor, swamping me with ardent aromas, leaving me wide-eyed, my heart hammering as I distill fragrant delicacies into a sketch of my honeymoon, unpolluted by too much strife. The carnal impermanence of the passing moment is lost in fuchsia. The musky sanctity of the church where Margaret and I married hypnotizes me, baking that long ago evening in the sugary smell of her soft young skin and the brimming cinnamon of my senses that takes my breath away exactly as my 18-year-old bride did when I first saw her coming down the aisle. I ride the pungent waves of my reverie to its end, inhaling through dulled nostrils, surprised at having such an emotional experience in so unexpected a place. By themselves, neither the garden nor you could have produced this effect on me. Together, 
You and the garden created a third thing. A magical entity without a name. Maybe it will come with the passion to enlarge and ennoble me. To turn something in my heart where the tall plumes of a thought can break new ground in my mind and change it. Can make me not only aware of my lack of understanding, but inspire me to do something about it. To strive for an inch of excellence. For the courage to emerge in the world with my unpredictable, strange little girl in tow. Truth is, I seem to never get over asking myself, why are you the way you are? Was it something you inherited from me? A lawnmower in the next yard roars and wrecks your pretty face, sending you wailing, running spastically into the house. The door to your eyes is closed again. I used to think if I could just learn to open that door myself, maybe even a little, I could somehow fix the odd wiring in your head so that the world wouldn't be a foreign place, so that you wouldn't be terrified of the sound of a lawnmower. I consider the door to my own eyes, how closed it is. I consider my own screwy wiring. Maybe, I think, the more interesting mystery isn't why you're the way you are. Perhaps the more interesting mystery is the way the world appears to you. I wish I could see it and hear it and smell it. I wish I could touch it and feel it and taste it. The way you do. <laughs>